And so going back to our example before, if we have two cognitive control tasks and they don't no correlate, we don't know if it's because there are multiple mechanisms of control or because there's just too much measurement error and then that's why they don't correlate with one another. And so I think we also need to improve not only in transparent science practices, but our basic science. And for example, going back to the rock, if we can't answer the questions visually, then whether we like it or not, we have to go deeper. Whether that takes resources, whether yeah, yeah. that takes time, that's science. We have to get the tools to answer the right questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, jadi Sandi bisa ngajar di geologi sekarang. <laughs> I only know those two: igneous, sedimentary, uh, and metamorphic. Dan, dan, dan bagi orang yang nggak tahu, ternyata psikologi itu bisa menjadi sangat menarik. Bukan hanya masalah mewawancara seseorang. Kenapa kemarin begitu ya? Jadi ini menarik sekali. Nah, jadi makin banyak ketemu orang itu ya makin ini terbuka pikiran. Oke, okay, nah sekarang untuk urusan apa ya? Open science ini. Yes. Is it really relevant to all major or all field of study? I definitely think so because um, later on I'll, I'll put the link as well. They did a survey asking people how re replicable are the studies in your field, and for good science, like our ultimate goal is that we're only publishing truth and everything is replicable. Itu idealnya gitu. Tapi kalau kita lihat kenyataannya, whether it's in biology, chemistry, medicine, psychology, um, geology, everyone is saying, I can't replicate our findings. And so the problem is with everyone, with every with every area, then the solution, we must find solutions for every area as well. Exactly. And so open science, if, if um, and we know the open science movement has actually gone across all over the world. Sampai CERN, they're actually looking for an open science manager. That's how relevant it is. And I do believe open science practices is relevant to every science, but it will look different. Contohnya, for us in um, psychology, I'm not sure what it's like in geology, kadang-kadang it's very easy to collect data. Kita panggil 30 orang, pas di UNSW kita infrastrukturnya bagus, dalam sehari kelar data collection for one paper. Now, bayangin, if we have another study, even in psychology as well, the data collection took them 10 years mm -hmm. for a longitudinal study. And so they may not necessarily be able to just open the data the same way we do. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of money invested in that, there's a lot of time invested in that. Some areas, yang kerja sama dengan government, there's ethical issues as well. Mm -hmm. For example, one of my friends is working with um, child emergency services for child abuse in Australia. And data tersebut, they, mereka tuh kontrak, nggak boleh dibikin open. So open science principles, open science principles are applicable for every area. The practical side will look quite different from mm -hmm. one field to another. Another example, a major area in psychology, yang sekarang mulai emerge adalah cognitive modeling. Mm -hmm. Dimana we, we use, um, for example, let's do it this way. Well, let me ask you, Pak mm -hmm. Have you done a t-test before? T-test. T-test, yeah. 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 Have you ever done linear modeling before? Yeah. Linear modeling? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so it's great because a lot of people may not really understand the whole statistics are just models. We're trying to understand data according to mathematical models to understand the data. And what cognitive modeling does is that they try to generate more complex models. Mm -hmm. And that's very, very exploratory. Kalau misalnya banyak penelitian, mungkin kan sangat confirmatory gitu, in some areas, tapi ada banyak exploratory. Exploratory and confirma confirmatory research akan sangat berbeda in terms of its pre-registration. Akan sangat berbeda in terms of how it's going to look practically. And I'm not afraid to admit that in terms of open science, we don't have everything figured out yet. There's still an ongoing debate, there's still an ongoing discussion. What's the bidang? What is it going to look like? What's the best version going to look like? In terms of statistics, in terms of open science practices, in terms of writing and reporting, we're, I don't think we're close to the perfect answer yet for any field. We have to start somewhere. Exactly. And the fact that we're started is great. It's made a lot of progress. Um, but that's why for, for everyone listening as well, if you have suggestions and ideas on open science, don't be afraid to share them because we're all still thinking. Yeah. We're all still thinking for, for every field. Prinsipnya sama, tapi what is it going to look like practically? Yeah. <laughs> so, jadi... 
di geologi ini terutama masalah itu pada saat itu lot of money investment uh, drill hole ya kan very yep. deep yep. very expensive and then they can just share the data they cannot do that uh, mm-hmm. instantly maybe yep. in 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 five years yep. maybe yes but they people they they don't share it after 10 mm-hmm. years okay. um, Maybe forever, they don't share it because uh, um, student yang sekarang tadi pagi saya ini yep. rancara itu data yang dia pegang itu bahkan untuk institusi drilling besar itu hanya paper itu data yang umurnya hanya mungkin 10 tahunan gitu. hmm. itu kan tidak terlalu lama sebenarnya. itu hanya paper based aja kalaupun ada PDF raw data drilling apa segala enggak, enggak ada karena drilling itu kan ada banyak sensor Nah, yep. itu kan raw data sensor uh, itu juga tidak ada sudah jadi dia tidak bisa lagi membuat plot yang sama dari data yang sama udah tidak bisa dia hanya ya, ya. dia yeah. hanya bisa mengcopy paste plot yang sudah dibuat orang lain dan harus percaya itu yep. nah kalau dia memang ada hal yang tidak dipercaya maka dia harus drill baru ya ampun ya nah, gitu <laughs> nah itu masalah replicability di geologi itu itu So it's due to yeah. a lack of open data. Mostly. Yeah, yeah, lack of okay. open data because uh, uh, huge amount of investment. Yep. Nah, kecuali mungkin yang seperti bidang saya itu lebih ke air, lebih mm. ke environment, mungkin itu lebih low cost, jadi orang bisa instantly mm. uh, share data. Begitu mm. tuh mungkin lebih sekarang bisa lebih cepat itu berjalan. Mm. Gitu. Absolutely. But that's really interesting, Pete, because In psychology, we have a lot of those questions as well. I know we have this mindset. I collected this data. It's my data. It's mine to use. It's 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 my data. We have ownership. And one of the major questions we have in open science is, okay, who is our research really for? Because I think that the reason we have science in the first place. I think one of the lead scientists in the Australian New South Wales government. He's like the lead scientist. Dia bilang gitu. In the definition of science itself. The very definition of science itu sangat terkait dengan making the world a better place for the people. Mm-hmm. And if there's anything we can do to do that, we should. Mm-hmm. No matter fieldnya apa ya. No matter what yeah. the field. Memang practically it'll look a little bit different, and mm-hmm. and pragmatically, like practically, it's going to look a little bit different. But ultimately, I think that we just got to keep reminding ourselves we're doing science to make the world a better place. Yeah. We're doing science for the people. And the lastly is sometimes people that don't want to share the data. Okay, one is about the ownership. The data yeah. is mine. Yeah, it's, it's mine. Bahkan pada saat saya bilang, oke, okay, datanya memang punya anda, tidak masalah. Tapi dibagi dalam format yang mudah untuk dipakai orang. Orang yes. tetap akan mengaku itu punya anda. Tidak yeah. ada masalah. Yeah, yeah. They still don't want to share. <laughs> Jadi masalahnya ada di mana kan? Karena saya juga nggak nggak ngerti begitu. I understand. Yeah. And I think it's great. Like, if if you're watching this and you might have any of those questions, mm-hmm. um, pop them in the comment section, and yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. will get to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if Good. you have any questions about yeah. that, because we don't want a lecture. We want a discussion mm-hmm. about open science. We know mm-hmm. that it's something new. We know that it's something that, for a lot of people, it may be a little bit scary. Mm-hmm. Not, it's 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 a very sudden change for for in mm-hmm. in the whole world in a lot of academia. Tapi as Fahirwin says, is that if we see really science it's not only about your publication count it's not only about your citation yeah, yeah. but your overall reputation will depend on how willing are you to move the science forward in yeah, yeah. kita for the international conferences those who are able to make their data open those who are willing to to work together those who are willing to admit maybe i've made a mistake they're the most respected scientists in addition to the additional citations that they get from the data the additional um acknowledgements that And so sebenarnya, making data open will further your scientific career. Thinking about it pragmatically. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Because um, pengalaman saya juga, ada random people itu pernah terakhir mungkin, random student, yeah. eh, sebulan yang lalu itu ketemu saya, dia bilang, Pak, Bapak yang bikin data ini. Gitu. Hmm. Ya, kenapa? Saya menemukan di uh, Google, Hmm. Nah, dengan Google saya menemukan ini dan kebetulan saya punya riset yang bidang yang lain yang mungkin bisa pakai data bapak untuk membantu riset hmm. saya. Jadi yeah. risetnya tentang geofisik, oh. nah, data saya tentang muka air tanah. So hmm. they can actually relate 
the geophysical property of Bandung area with the level of groundwater. That's amazing. In the area. So, jadi ya itu hmm. manfaat yang kadang-kadang tidak instan kita dapatkan. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Kan? And and yeah, and I think yeah. well, we can testify that we've opened data, and it's only been good things for us. <laughs> There's no point kita ngerasa people use our data without crediting, yeah, yeah. and and anytime at least for me it's like and I'm sure for mm. you as well that every time we've done open science practices including open data open methods people are more appreciative. Mm. People are more appreciative of us. Yeah. yeah, because we're still different than um, most people. <laughs> Nanti kalau sudah biasa jadi biasa saja begitu kan kita berbagi data dan seterusnya. Jadi prinsip yang ditekankan itu kalau kita punya sesuatu kita bagikan terus ada yang mencuri mengklaim sebagai milik dia jangan salahkan kita yang hmm. membagikan data yeah. tetap salahkan pencurinya yeah. gitu. jadi jangan menyalahkan diri sendiri karena kita membagikan sesuatu exactly. gitu ya. if we're always afraid then we shouldn't even try yeah. we should yeah. always stay at home and do nothing yeah. afraid of anything that will happen yeah. anything that is good like any good movement in the world pasti ada yang misuse okay. it doesn't mean the movement isn't good So, Sandy, uh, hari ini mau ke mana saja? That is a good question. <laughs> so, this is the very first time saya ke Bandung dengan istilahnya ada waktu jalan-jalan. Yeah. And so, Pak Erwin very kindly suggests we go to the valley, which is a beautiful, beautiful place. Yeah. And I don't know, we we might go visit some puppies uh, yeah. if we have time. Dan di sini ada Jessica. This is my beautiful and wonderful partner. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely open to suggestions, but... Bandung is a beautiful city. Itebe is a wonderful campus, and we have a wonderful host who's taking us today. <laughs> and then, uh, shall we finish? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Thank you so much for listening, everyone. Yeah. Selamat siang.